Hi guys, it's Haley of Monster Cosplay, and it's uh been, you know, just a fucking year since I last uploaded a video. Um, you're in a good way to, to sort of say hello to a lot of a lot of subscribers that have joined over the last year. Holy shit. It's like 900 of you. I feel like when I stopped making videos, there was like maybe 400. So hi, um, welcome. What are you guys doing here? But yeah, I just put out like a random call on Instagram of just ask me questions. Like literally ask me anything. It doesn't even have to be related to cosplay, just life in general. And we're gonna kind of go through and we're gonna answer some of those questions. Basic information about me. These questions weren't necessarily asked in these posts, but I feel like they come up enough that people maybe just wanna know general information. So. Um, hi, my name is Haley of Moth Child Cosplay. I am 23 years old. Um, I live currently in Eastern Connecticut with my husband. We've been married for about five years. And outside of cosplay, I do IT and help desk support for a program that dealerships use to register and title vehicles all across the US. That's a mouthful, but let's jump into some little questions. Okay, so how has quarantine affected the creativity in your builds? And this is from uh, Famon Cosplay Studios, my friend Kevin from New York. Um, so quarantine has fucked me up, fam. I have not finished fully 100% a single costume since we've gone into quarantine, which means this full year I have not finished a single full costume. Every single costume so far has like something left on it. And it's usually really small shit that I've just been too lazy to really sit down and finish up. A really great example of that is actually this staff. He looks really, really wonderful from the front, and uh, I don't think everything's set up currently to where I can I can properly demonstrate. Anyway, and the fog machine when it's turned on, it like pours out the eyes in the nose, and it's really badass. And I've got like a little light system and everything in there. But when you turn them around, <laughs> he's missing his head. He's got an extra hole. I initially <laughs> had the idea to make an entire separate little back part that would hinge open so I could access the batteries and the lights and everything in there. It's really important to me when I do anything with electronics to make it easily accessible, but I just never got around to that. And it's like literally painted. All that I need to do is glue, like find a hinge that's the right size and glue that into place and we're good. But I just haven't. So that's a good example right there. Um, my Mizutsune armor from earlier this year, that's actually one of my first like almost completely finished costumes that I finished back in April or May. I need to paint the boots. I just hate painting, so I haven't done it. <laughs> Even Sally White Mane with the hat that I just put on, that costume is uh, missing some little leg armor pieces. And then also there's supposed to be a machine, a little servo set up that moves the eye on the hat and the eye on the staff around. And I just, I just haven't. That has kind of been it. I'm really hoping that with Magda, which is my next build, I've just started on her last night, that I'm really going to push myself and not allow myself to not finish that build because she is a literal dream costume. So Weed Name Sin asks, how do you decide on what you want to do next? I actually really like this question and it's really a simple thing. I kind of have like a running random list of things that catch my attention. Sometimes I'll go back to that list of things that caught my attention and sometimes in the middle of me making the costume, I'll see something that I'm just like, fuck man, I'm making that next. Haley is a fickle beast and Haley makes what Haley wants and if Haley no want, Haley no make. Same Erdika Kamasala says, damn, those horns are cool. That's not a question. But thank you. Gabriel Rail asks, how much 3D printing do you use? Is it viable for larger armor pieces, like helmets or armor? I use an ever-growing amount of 3D printing in my build. Um, I really like 3D printing. I am actually currently planning on making a fully 3D printed armor for the Doom Slayer from uh, Doom Eternal. So really what it comes down to when it comes to is 3D printing viable option. It's the amount of work that you want to put into it and what you're looking to get out of it. Be prepared to fill, sand, dye, sand again. Smooth On has this lovely, lovely clear coat that I actually used for my skull in the background over there, which you use to coat 3D printed objects and it helps get rid of a lot of, of uh, print lines. That can definitely be a time saver, but you're still going to be sanding. <laughs> Kratos on dope. I'm sorry, I love that name. I don't know, it's just... <laughs> How are you able to build your fuzzy, furry wolf head? So, um, that is referring to my... Maybe I have a quick picture of it. 
uh, on my phone. I don't know why I'm just saying that I have a picture of it on my phone instead of just like popping it into the video, which would be the reasonable thing to do. That's referring to my headdress for my Merc Wolf from League of Legends. This headdress was a blast to make. So the base of that um, helmet, that headpiece, was actually made from a fox mask pattern from Casual Cosplay, who is an incredible, oh my god, an incredible creator. I actually ended up covering that whole thing in fur. I cut out where the eyes were, I sculpted and then resin cast some eyes, and for all like the little tendrils, it's literally two, like a rectangle of, of faux fur that I like tapered at the ends and then folded and like whip stitched along the ends. Like it's, it's super simple. I'll probably like post video of something. I really want to remake that and make a new one. So I'll probably do like a little video of like how I did it eventually. Mecca Maxine asks, how do you go from budgeting a big build to breaking down each section to progressively finish a build? You've done a lot of ambitious builds, thank you. And even when involving new techniques or processes, you always seem to have a really good gauge of how much is left depending on how much you want to improve it. Yay for a new YouTubey. Hey, what's up? It's yay, it's YouTubing. Basically, whenever I get a cosplay, I treat it like a pizza. You have a whole large pizza in front of you. You're not gonna take that entire fucking pizza and shove it into your mouth. You will choke and you will die and it does not work. Instead, what do you do with pizza? You cut it into slices. Those slices are still too large. I mean, I guess technically you may be able to shove an entire pizza slice into your mouth. I can't do that. Send me a video if you can. I actually am like a little curious, but um, you take smaller bites. What I really do when it comes to builds is, is pretty similar to that. I take a build, like a really, really complex thing, and I cut it into slices. So I'll break it down effectively and go, okay, this is armor. So what, what, what's the most basic form of this? There's a chest plate, there's some pauldrons, there's some bracers and some gloves. Okay, perfect. That's lovely. Then I'll take those slices and I break them down into bite-sized pieces. So the most basic form of this breastplate is this really really basic shape and i can add these details by putting extra foam pieces along the edges okay everything will seem incredibly overwhelming to you at first if you're really first getting into cosplay it's going to make a lot of sense it's going to fall into place i promise you i promise <laughs> the spooky darling says i just want to drink with you and tell me how much i love you i ah that's literally what it says um I want to drink with you too. That goes for everybody. Y'all see me at a con, just go, hey fam, you want to get a drink? And more than likely, I'll be like, yes, let's do it right now. My feet hurt. Please help me escape this pain. Weirdest memory related to cosplay. I think my weirdest memory that I have related to cosplay uh, would probably be, I was at Colossal Con East with a friend of mine. We were wearing matching costumes and I forgot who we were with. We were with somebody that I knew vaguely. Um, and they were like, oh, come over here. And I was like, all right. And then me and my friend come walking over and out of nowhere, this man in a Master Chief helmet just like scoops us both up, like one on each arm. And we're like, people are taking photos and we're just like, okay, like what's going on? We ended up, me and Master Chief guy, his name's Mike. Hey Mike, how's it going? He's a friend of mine. We're all buds. Um, it's just one of those weird things of like, this would only happen at a convention. And fortunately, like, it happened in a situation where we were all having a good time and we felt safe. And I don't know, it resulted in weird friendships. That's that's a weird little memory. Um, favorite memory at a convention. And both of those questions are from Salty Patches, who's a friend of mine. Hi, Patricia. So my favorite memory at a con, I actually, they both happened at BlizzCon in 2019. So my first, 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 my first favorite memory, oh my goodness, I cannot tell you like how much this means to me. Um, and you probably tell like I'm so fucking excited. BlizzCon was a dream convention for me. I wanted to go to BlizzCon for literally 10 years. I finally got to go in 2019. I don't like, I still to this day cannot believe that I got to go. And I got to walk across the state at community night. Ah! I know that might not seem like a lot to you guys, but to me, like, Community night videos, watching people walk across in their costumes at BlizzCon. I was so obsessed with that. That was like, I saw those videos and I remember thinking to myself like, wow, I want to be that fucking cool that I get to walk across the stage at BlizzCon. And I did! And like, literally, 13-year-old Haley would be losing her fucking shit today. Like, 13-year-old Haley probably would not believe who I am, where I am, what I'm doing, what I've done. Like, it is insane. I live to make 13-year-old Haley happy because it's, I just, that's still, 
I don't know, my dreams and my desires have not changed a lot since the age of 13, I guess is really what it comes down to. <laughs> so my second favorite memory was also a BlizzCon, like I said, and it actually happened Saturday night. Um, I ran into some people that Justin, my husband, made friends with. He is incredible at making friends. I do not understand how he does it. He's just like this amazing social butterfly. People gravitate towards him. They love him. He's got this big, shiny personality and like a really wonderful laugh. And um, we're all hanging out. We're all drinking. And I forgot exactly what happened. But basically, <laughs> what it came down to is I found myself at like 2.30 in the morning sitting in the hotel like lobby and somebody who wasn't necessarily like the founding team of Facebook, but worked with Facebook in its early years while it was becoming what we know it today, who is was like able to retire in his late 30s and now like skis across the country and does all these wonderful things. I have him on Facebook. He's living a happy, wonderful life and I'm so fucking jealous. Um, like had like a really big heart to heart with me and was like, you know, what, are, what do you want? Like you're young, you have these amazing opportunities. What are you wanting out of life? what's going to get you where you want to go. And I just remember like sitting there and I was contemplating like, I really do have all these opportunities. I have all these things in front of me that five minutes ago before we had this conversation, I never thought about. And it made me consider doing a career change. Um, I moved out of banking and I'm now in IT and hoping to get into software engineering. And it's just helped put me on a good path of, of uh, motivation and goodness, I guess is really the best way to, to describe it, so. That memory means a lot to me. I know it's not quite as fun as the other one. It's more of a serious memory, but you know, cons are weird like that. What is the hardest aspect of working on long cosplay builds? Motivation, keeping up motivation. It's really hard for me to try and find that balance. I've worked, I have costumes that I've worked on for literally like three months, sometimes half a year, and they come out wonderful, but I lose motivation like two thirds of the way through. And then I have other costumes that I've made in a month, but because they're so rushed, I hate them and I hate looking at them and I hate wearing them because I associate staying up till 2 a.m. every single night with those costumes. From Caillou on the Bayou, dear favorite, we're all still waiting for you to come to Louisiana. I wanna go to Louisiana. I love Louisiana. I, okay, I say I love Louisiana. I love New Orleans and I love New Orleans culture and I love the idea of going to visit um, on like an off season when there's not a lot of people. I think it'd be really, really lovely. I don't know if there are actually really like a lot of conventions in Louisiana, so like, let me know. Request me. If you want me to go to a convention, reach out to that convention and say, hey guys, invite Moth Child. She's fun, she does these things. Um, she'll do panels about cosplay. So from Jen Rain, we have, what are five words or phrases you would use to describe yourself? What the actual fuck, Haley? How long did it take to make your white bean cosplay? And that's from pontus.e02. Which white mane? I have two white beans. Um, the cursed witch white mane took about a month from start to what I'm considering completion. And my OG white mane, actually yeah, she took about a month too. Those costumes should have taken a lot longer. I cut some corners. I did things that I didn't want to do with them. And uh, I think the quality suffers a little bit, but they're still fun to look at. So it's all that really matters, right? So Caitlin underscore Blood Rose asks, do you have any advice for me? I want to cosplay. Totally. Do it. Just do it. Act like a tennis shoe and do it. Um, don't expect yourself to be God level when you're starting out. You are going to move at your own pace. Uh, feel free to ask people for assistance. Feel free to go on YouTube and look up so many tutorials. Kamui Cosplay, Evil 10, Talk Customs, Punished Props, SKS Props too. Like there are so many people, so many amazing resources for so much information. Use it all, use it all. And do not be afraid to fail because you will fail and it's gonna fucking suck, but it's good. You're gonna get through it and you're gonna look amazing at the end of the day. Does the screen name Moth Child have a story behind it? Not really. Um, I made this page when I was going through like my new goth phase, which was this fashion thing that was on Pinterest for a while. I guess technically some might consider me to still be like new goth. It's whatever. And there were shirts that were really popular that said Moon Child. And when I made my page, I didn't really know what to call it. And I was like, hmm, I don't know. Moon Child cosplay, like that kind of works. And then I looked it up and there was already somebody with that name. So I was like, okay, well, you know, what else do I like? 
mods. I really fucking like mods. And I do. Ooh, I love mods. Mods get me like going. I love them little bitches. They're great. So I was just like, okay, like Moth Moon, it's still an M. Let's just Moon Child, Moth Child cosplay. There we go. So yeah, Moth Child CC stands for Moth Child Cosplay and Creations, and it's just a random bullshit name that I kind of came up with. Have you ever traveled to a different country to go to a Comic Con? And this is from Dominic underscore Everlot. I have not. Um, I just don't have the money. <laughs> That's really it. There is a convention in Canada that I was actually planning on going to this year, um, but Corona happened and it stopped travel from really going on and a lot of conventions uh, canceled. Um, I really want to go to the UK. I have a lot of really lovely friends in the UK and MCM seems like a really good time. So <laughs> Yasme asks, will you ever come to UK con? Maybe. Do you have siblings? I do. I have a half brother. His name's Austin and he deletes every single one of my comments when I comment on his Instagram profile. Every single one. I don't know why. I think it's because he knows that like I'm the cooler sibling, that everybody would like me more. But who knows? Favorite scary video game. I do not like scary video games. I'm really bad at them. Um, I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't like them. But lately, I've been into phasmophobia. It's been a lot of fun. Um, so I guess I'd have to say that. Arakaicho, I believe I pronounced that correctly, is What's one thing you'd like to learn in the next year? I want to learn the proper way to get my LEDs to blink and my servos to move at the same time without fucking up. But anyway, that's really a big thing. I kind of was able to get it like figured out with my Sally Whiteman build, kind of. Um, when my servos move, the lights blink. Um, they're not supposed to, they're supposed to like remain stagnant basically. I'll actually, I might be able to demonstrate. I don't know if you'll really be able to tell, but when these servos move, it's conflicting with the, uh, the lights. And it's not a power issue. It's not a power issue. I initially thought that maybe it was a power issue. I've hooked it up to the different power sources and it's not an issue with the power. It's just an issue with the program and the Arduino being unable to compute the two functions at the same time. And then my last question, from Lifebinder Cosplay. How did you make your room for your white mane and how does your lower cape stay put? That's really convenient because I have this guy out already. I'm not sure if you want to know more about like the broom head or the handle. So this guy though is actually pretty basic. I made a full base out of EVA foam. This guy is completely hollow as you can see in here. I made my base shape. I sat down with my Dremel. I carved in some texture lines which you can see right through here to help add some texture and dimension to the base. And then I cut dowels and I spent the time trimming them all down to have points, spent the time dremeling them down to be smooth at the points, and then attached it with contact cement and hot glue to my broom head. This gold part is made out of EVA foam. I believe I used eight or 10 millimeter for it. And then of course I dremeled everything to try and have these smooth edges actually. So this, center part and all these little army pieces were separate. Um, these have been glued together with contact cement and then I filled in the seam to help make it look like it's just one piece. The eyeball on the inside. I should go ahead and pull this guy out. This guy's actually plastizote. Um, you can see some wear and tear. He's got to get repainted. Um, I never repainted him after he had some issues earlier. So it's plastizote. I just used a uh, half ball to give me the shape that I needed. I used a wood burner to help burn in that texture. And then I set the pupil in so that way it would look three dimensional. So you'd have like a little bit more dimension to it. This guy just sits right inside of an acrylic orb. And hopefully when it's all said and done, he will move something like this. Just kind of all around doing his own little thing. Same goes for the hat. The eyeball for the hat was made the exact same way. Class is oak inside of an acrylic orb and he's gonna move. Um, the broom handle, I built up the shape with tin foil, put painter's tape over it, and then covered that shit in foam clay. So much foam clay. It does have a PVC base. I used um, half inch PVC and uh, it comes apart in three different places using PVC connectors that were covered with that tin foil for bulk and then um, foam clay. So yeah. That's pretty much the majority of it. Um, there is a hole, as you can see, the very bottom, where the handle slips through to connect to the broom head. The broom head will be glued on permanently, eventually. 
that'll just happen once the uh, mechanical pieces have been installed because I don't want to have to fiddle with an entire like broom handle or the whole top part of it to get things set up and going. The butt cape is deceptively simple in its attachments. It literally has snaps. And yes, you can see the undersides. You can see all my sins. It attaches to my bodysuit with, with snaps. There's snaps at the front on each side and then there's one singular snap at the back. Um, th these were super simple to install. They're just hammer-on snap. I believe they're size 16. You can pick those up at a Joann's. I love these things. They are pretty heavy duty. They're more reliable than a sew-on snap and they're just super awesome. Uh, the way that I installed these ones, uh, I think it's pretty obvious, but just in case, I sewed up the entire uh, fabric part first hammered these guys in and then applied my, my gold over top. So, you know, super simple. Anyway, those are pretty much all of the questions that I've gotten from those little, those little posts that I made. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below, try and answer them. I think I'd actually like to make this into like a little monthly series of like the first Wednesday of every month, we answer some questions and we get to know each other. Um, here's my question for you guys. How long do you boil your ramen for? If it's the black ramen, I usually do like four and a half minutes, but if it's like the cup of noodles and I do like a minute 30, maybe two minutes at the most, otherwise it like explodes all over my microwave and I'm just not into that. Um, but let me know. I feel like ramen is such a simple thing that everybody has a different way of doing it. And also I only microwave my ramen. So yeah, I also microwave my tea. So <laughs> Brits come for me, I guess, LOL. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get canceled by the UK prime minister. Just watch, it'll be great. Uh, thank you guys for stopping by and saying hello and having a good time with us. I will, uh, I, I would say I would see you at a convention and if not, I'll see you next week uh, like I used to do. But there's no conventions. <laughs> Everything's canceled, so. <laughs> Bye.